All right, so I'm back here with update number three for the Chestnut DIY chip installation. And I've decided to make one change here, and that is that I'm gonna stop trying to find small pieces that will fit the Chestnut Air. So I've decided to move on to bigger pieces because it's rather hard to find pieces that are not only that will fit the squares on Chestnut Air. I mean, you can kind of find it, but the top of the piece, for example, like right here has to be at the proper ratio to the base so it won't look, the board won't look so crowded. So it's rather hard to, to find that. So I'm just going to make some pieces that will fit the Chestnut Pro. All right, so what I have here now, I have some Staunton pieces. These are made in Poland. This here is the number six set. And um, these are some nice pieces and they're relatively cheap. I mean, it was $31 for this set and it comes with a nice wooden box. So if you just wanted a nice set of chess pieces anyway, well, this is a nice set. All right, so um, what I want to show you here is that, okay, you see I've already removed the felt and removed the metal from the bottom of these um, the inserts from the weights rather from these two pieces the glue on these things are extraordinarily sticky just like on any other set i've had but i've taken a risk on getting them out as you can see sometimes they even different sizes like this one's a bit smaller than this one as you can see the rim that also makes the rim much more vulnerable to say for example if you try to like pick this out you might just you know crack this wood right here so what how did i get the how did i get these out without um cracking anything or, or, or breaking anything let me show you so i have a soldering iron right here i can find me i you can buy a soldering iron like this cheap right here on amazon uh for like um i don't know 10 bucks probably this thing is set to 350 degrees um and basically you just take uh the soldering iron and you just lay it right across as, first of all, let me show you this. You lay it right across the thing and, and heat it up. But first, as you can see, you it, this, this, you just got to take my word for it. You cannot pull this out easily without risking stabbing yourself with this pick or damaging the wood to the extent that where you might even crack the pond. So we're just going to lay this across it. This is 350 degrees and just rotate it around. You, see, you might even see a little wisp of smoke because it's burning some of the glue. Let me scratch my page here for a second. You might see some of the glue that's on top of the thing burning for right now. And again, if you want to try this, if you have a soldering iron, great. But if not, I have a link in the description. Um, I bought this soldering iron a very long time ago. It was in a kit. And I think the kit was about $20. So I'm reckoning that this soldering iron is about $10. So I'll try to find a nice, cheap soldering iron and put it in the description in case if you're at your wits end trying to get out these glued in pieces without ruining the actual piece so you can drill down into it. So let's see if that's hot enough. It is 350 degrees and not hot enough just yet. Put in a little longer and you want to try to go around it. And one of the thing I know, one thing I noticed if you try to put more heat to where the biggest gap is at, so that way that's likely going to be the side that you're going to pry into. So if you heat that up more, you're going to get a good starting point with that glue. Um, melting. It's not going to completely melt, but it's going to probably, it's going to loosen up and it's going to become very elastic like in rubber. At least the glue that's on these pieces here is what's going to happen. So this right here is again set to 350 degrees. Let's just rotate it around a little bit here. All right, let's try to get it out now. All right, and it's, it's coming. I can feel it coming. Yeah, there it is. See, just like that. I could do it a little while longer, but uh, that's good enough right there. As you can see, that just peeled right out, as you can see, just like that. But the one thing you want to worry about it, this thing is kind of hot. Let's see. No, it's not super hot. I guess it dissipates heat very well. Just like that, you see how that rubberized sort of, let me show you here, as you might can tell here. You see how this right here kind of picks up like this. It kind of elasticizes that glue. See how that just peels right out of there? Because if not, just imagine that glue was like rock hard. You can't pull that out without um, ruining the piece or stabbing yourself with a pick. So if you want to try this method here, it's very simple, very easy, and actually cheap. Again, you can buy a solder iron for like 10 bucks. And, um, you know, make me, I, again, like I said, I'm just guessing you can get one for $10. But anyway, I'm going to clean this out here and we're going to hop over to the drill and we're going to go ahead and drill down into this pond now that they are big enough and insert 
a chip. All right, so we're back here at the drill press, quote unquote, and um, have everything set up. Have us extra light right here so we can see everything good. I offset the drill bit just a bit, being that this hole right here is not totally centered right here. So what that'll do is probably give us a better chance of not like hitting the side or um, messing anything up. So with that said, I had to grab my tweezers really quick. And we're just gonna go down a little bit and see if we can get the piece in and see what happens here. So let's go ahead and get the drill up, get the drill down, and let's make sure everything is lined up, still lined up correctly before I go in. Hold it still. All right, let's do it. All right, let's back up here just for a second. Um, let me see here, I forgot to cut on my air tank right quick. I need some compressed air, so let me, let me cut that on. My tank is really quick about uh, filling up really fast, so only probably takes about a minute or so, but I think enough will come out so that I can spray now. Yeah. All right, looks like we get in somewhere here. I think it was getting through that glue quite a bit. So let's just set this down and we're going to go ahead and back in for a little bit more of this, a um, little bit more of this action here and see how it go. Oh, let me turn this way. Don't want to go too far. I'm going to just go a little bit at a time. Pull out and check it out. All right, let's pull out. See what we got. Okay, that seems to be going rather well. Again, I don't want to take it too fast because I don't really know, you know, how, what's going on here with this wood. All right, let's blow that out and see what we got. Okay, it's on. I would have thought it would have been going a little bit, been going a little deeper, but um, again, I don't want to take any chances on going too, you know, too hard with it. So that's why I'm gonna keep going kind of slow here. Okay, see what we got here. Could probably be doing this a bit faster, but again, I'm not a I'm not a super woodworking guy, so I can't. Let's see here. At least is it going? How deep is it? Because again, we already got some leeway with the hole itself, with the actual depth of this. So we don't have to go that far, actually. So that's one good thing about these pieces, because once it's down in there, just a little bit a little bit past being flush, we're good to go. Let's try to keep going. Get this back up here. Oh, felt like it just, felt like it went a little hard at times. So maybe what it was could have been a lot of glue up in there what I was hitting. So let me not push too hard now. Oh yeah, see, see, that's what I was afraid of because I didn't know what was coming. That's why I was going slow and I'm glad I did and not try to hit it too hard there. Let's see what we got now. Oh yeah, that's almost there. Let me get my tweezers. What are my tweezers? Okay, here we go. Get those and take that out. Make sure we don't really mess that chip up there. Okay, we're going just a little further. We're just gonna keep, keep nibbling at it till we get them in there. Let's see, Let's see what we got here. All right, let's try that, see what we got. Okay, 
try that and see what we got. It might be about good right here. It's almost. Again, I, I again I don't have to take the hole down too far. Let's see. Oh man, that is very close. You only need to go about a probably not an eighth of an inch, but maybe yeah, maybe about a I wouldn't even think an eighth of an inch. Probably about a sixteenth or maybe three thirty seconds or something like that. Oh, this is exciting. So this is this is a nice little project here, I gotta say. Uh, let's get down in here and get a little more of this. All right. Oh, let's try to pull that out. Okay, let's see what we got here now. Oh yeah, that's that's that should be plenty right there. Let me see, where does that chip go here? And um, let's see. Oh yeah. There we go. Let's see here. Let me get that down in there. Oh yeah, that's perfect. That's it. That's it right there. That just need to be glued in place. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to go inside. I'm going to take a piece of felt and just put across it before I glue it in place. Because, again, the problem is that if you plan pretty fast, if it's not glued in place, it probably make the chip fall out. So because I'm going to go ahead and permanently make this set here. These these are uh, chips are cheap enough to where you can get another set if you need them. And um, but anyway, we're going inside. We're going to put them on the board. and We're going to test this piece out. All right, so we're back in the board with the piece. So I have the, the board into edit mode. So let's just make sure squares are working before we test anything out. Everything seems to be working. All pieces seem to be accepted. So let's go ahead and take this piece here off. We're going to set now. Before I begin, let me show you what we have here. So as you can see, the chip is inserted in here nicely and it's snuggled. So I got a lot of room to work with right here in case if I need to adjust this chip. So let's go ahead and set the chip down with no felt and see how it goes. The chip is recognized. It is a black pawn, just as expected. So now let's take and put the felt. I'm just going to take the felt without gluing it to make sort of a quote unquote worst case scenario. Let's see, can it be um, detected? So we're going to just lightly set it on top of that felt. And it is not detected, but if we push it, it's detected. So basically... It's probably nearer adjusted, and don't forget, you can always get felt thinner than this. This here's some um, pretty, let's put my hand behind it. That's some pretty sort of a uh, thick felt. So you could always get smaller pieces, or what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this here, to get my tweezers, I can get this in there, focus. I'm just gonna adjust this just a bit. I don't wanna pull it out too far, okay. I got a lot of wiggle room right here to work with this here. I think that moved it. That moved it just a hair. And again, I'm trying not to hit that chip too much here. That's why I got these little tweezers here that have like a plastic end on them here. I may have to go get my other tweezers. But yeah, this is seemed to have moved it a little bit. Oh, I'm touching that chip too much. It probably is okay, but so let's try it again. I think what I have here will be okay because. The thing is, is that, uh, yeah, <clears throat> let me see if I can do that again. Get this adjusted a little bit better. I may have to go get my other tweezers here. Yeah, okay, that moved it a little bit. Let's see if we can get that up out of here without hurting that chip. Oh, there we go. We moved it, so now let's kind of reseat it a little bit. This time, not take it quite as far. Okay, so we see how far that is. It's kind of right on the edge, as you can see that. So let me take it down just a hair. So again, when you're doing this, account for adjusting your pieces. Let's see what this does. Okay, so when you do it like that, on the worst case scenario, it detects it right off. So what I would say is I would leave these chips right where they at because they are, if you look at it, <clears throat> they are recessed a bit in there. Let me see if I can get that into focus there. I can get that into focus. Let's go. There we go. And you can see that it is recessed just a bit, and I can... Uh, open that back up there I can uh see if I, I can't go across that with my 
straight edge here and I'm not hitting the chip. So I'm going to glue them in place at about that distance. So ba basically about looks like probably about a sixteenth from the edge to be on the safe side. Because again, if these felt pieces again, before I do everything, you see how that just detects right off. Yeah. And, and, and not only that, before I glue them up to see what I could do is I can actually probably just um, get some little excess glue on these felts. But what I might do is I have another cheaper piece, some cheaper sets and, I, and they have uh, very like paper thin, nearly paper thin um, felt bottoms. I might take the felt off those pieces. But with that said, guys, that's it for this one. What I'll do is when I come back in the next one, I will um, show I will film myself drilling down into a few pieces, installing the pieces in some of the sets. And if I can run into anything you all need to know, of course, I'm going to make a video about that. Off camera, I'm going to remove all the felt pieces, remove all of the uh, weights with the method I showed you with the soldering iron. And we're just going to go ahead and get these things in there and ready to go and get ready for the Chestnut Pro.